the embryology models what we are going to keep for your embryology viva so this model is meant for your pharyngeal pouches and clefts okay so what you are seeing here is the cleft so this is the first cleft these are all the remaining clefts getting obliterated by the downward growth of our second pharyngeal arch so these are all the clefts so this is the sorry these are all the pouches so this is the first pouch second pouch third pouch and fourth pouch so in this model what we are going to see is what happens to the cleft and pouches okay so this is the first cleft as i told in theory first cleft forms your external acoustic meatus now this is the first pouch this is getting converted into tubo tympanic recess so this narrow part is called as tubular part this expanded part is called as tympanic recess so that's why the first pouch is called as tubo tympanic recess okay so the tubular part gives rise to auditory tube the expanded tympanic recess forms middle ear cavity okay so what is derived from first pouch means auditory tube and your middle ear cavity what is derived from first cleft means external acoustic meatus so this region is important so this is external acoustic meatus this is your middle ear cavity what is separating the two that is your tympanic membrane so tympanic membrane is derived from this ectoderm as well as from this endoderm as well as intervening mesoderm so development of tympanic membrane is tridermal in origin that is your ectoderm outer part is derived from ectoderm inner part is derived from endoderm in between the middle part is formed by your mesoderm okay so that is your first cleft and first pouch so this is your second pouch so what is derived from second pouch means palatine tonsil okay so already you studied about that palatine tonsil the identification point the tonsillar crypt okay so the tonsillar crypt is nothing but remnant of our second pouch so what happens here surrounding this first pouch sorry your second pouch we are having accumulation of lymphatic nodules to form your palatine tonsil so the development of palatine tonsil means it is from second pouch okay so the tonsillar crypt is the remnant of your second pouch now this is the third pouch so this is more important it is divided into ventral part and dorsal part so this ventral part forms thymus the red color structure is the thymus so this dorsal part forms inferior parathyroid that only you have to keep it in mind the inferior parathyroid is derived from third pouch okay so along with that what we have is the thymus so now if you go to the fourth pouch that is also divided into ventral and dorsal part so this dorsal part gives rise to superior parathyroid okay so superior parathyroid is derived from fourth pouch inferior parathyroid is derived from third pouch why means you know the location of thymus so once the thymus is developed it is descending down along with your inferior parathyroid that's why your inferior parathyroid is derived from third pouch now what about the ventral part of fourth pouch so the ventral part of fourth pouch forms ultimo bronchial body so this ultimo bronchial body gives rise to para follicular cells of thyroid okay so that is important important for your mcq also so this ultimo bronchial body gives rise to para follicular cells or c cells of thyroid okay so that only you are seeing here so this is the first pouch forming auditory tube and tympanic cavity second pouch forming your palatine tonsil third pouch forming your dorsal part forming your inferior parathyroid ventral part forms your thymus so your fourth pouch dorsal part forms your superior parathyroid the ventral part forms your ultimo bronchial body that gives rise to para follicular cells now what about the clefts 
So already I told about that first club that forms your external acoustic meatus. What about the remaining clubs? The remaining clubs are getting obliterated by the downward growth of second pharyngeal arch. Okay, now here in this model you are seeing a small space that is called as cervical sinus. Okay, so later on this will also completely get degenerates. Uh, okay, so that is due to downward growth of your second pharyngeal arch. So remaining all clubs are getting obliterated. Before obliteration, it forms your cervical sinus. Sometimes the cervical sinus persists to form a cyst that is called as bronchial cyst. Always that will present along the anterior border of sternocleidum as type. So if you see any cystic swelling along the anterior border of sternocleidum as type, you have to suspect your bronchial cyst. It is always called as cervical hydrocele. So, in this model, what we have seen is the, what is the fat of your cleft and pouches. Okay, thank you.